Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing well. For anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. And in today's episode, we're going to take a look at a few Series A teams that I've been looking at and just have a general chat about the format before it officially begins next week on Monday the 1st of February. So as a lot of you know, I had an operation before Christmas and that's predominantly been the reason why we've not had content regularly, consistently on the channel. I was hoping this week would be a little bit different, but again, I'm still in the, the kind of the the end part of my recovery I feel uh, getting used to being back at work juggling home life it's just really tiring me out and draining me and I've just not had one the motivation to be able to do content and just the energy in general so I hope you understand it's not that I don't want to do content and it's not because I haven't got ideas for content it's literally adjusting back to just regular life after being in bed for like four weeks especially because of how active I was prior to the operation has just really knocked me for six and it's just taking a little bit longer so i hope you guys can appreciate that that is the the only reason uh why content's been a little bit slower but like i say i keep saying week on week hopefully next week is the week and i'm really keeping my fingers crossed my energy levels are a little bit better next week and we can get back into a bit more of a consistent um schedule with everything so getting into today's episode want to talk about series eight like i say the rules are dropping officially on the ladder uh, updating on monday this coming monday the 1st of february which is very exciting we do have the legacy vgc server which is an alt shutdown server where you can actually practice these rules at the minute it's amazing uh that'll be linked down in the description if you want to check that out if you already haven't it's a really good way to just hop in and test some teams out and bounce some ideas around before the format officially begins on uh, on monday and um what we're going to do today is just jump over have a look at a few things that i've been playing around with and um just talk about the format in general i have thought about doing a tier list of the uh, restricted pokemon i've seen some very cool ones already that other content creators have done and it has been something that i thought about doing if you'd like to see a tier list video do comment down below let me know if there's enough of you that want to see it i will put that together over the weekend it'll be a very fun video to do so do let me know right getting into it today we're going to hop over into showdown uh we'll start off i guess with a few games with this team that have been running the calorex ice rider team that have been playing uh, i really wanted to test calorex uh the ice rider as soon as i saw it as soon as i saw its stats which are just ridiculous i think it's one of the best restrictive pokemon in the format it definitely has a hard time um, because of all the steel types and fire types that it doesn't really appreciate going up against. But I still think it's got a very strong place in the format. And solely because of this attack stat, this 165 attack stat is just phenomenal. And it's defenses, which is 100 HP, 150 defense and 130 special defense. It's nuts. 50 base speed is quite nice as well so it can really take advantage of trick room but doesn't depend on it so much that it has to it has to be up for it to function well um i've just i'm just toying around with it at the minute i haven't done any fancy ev spreads and i'd say a big big thing for all of you like new players out there don't spend too much time when you're initially testing a pokemon or a team on ev spreads don't get bogged down by them just chuck in 252 252 the ev spread um like fixing polishing up can come at the end you can spend a lot of time on it at the end when you've had a lot of experience playing with that pokemon in particular you'll know exactly what certain calcs that you'd like to survive have a look at the ones that you commonly come up against that take down that pokemon you've got a lot more knowledge base after you've tested a lot but if you're bogging yourself down with working on ev spreads before you're even starting a game you're already behind because the 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 time that you could have just invested in to see if you wanted to play that pokemon is way more valuable than what it is spending on evs that are maybe not so relevant that you initially thought were my two cents anyway we'll get into it uh calorexian as i say nothing fancy a few of the other pokemon do have specific ev spreads this is because i've used incineroar in multiple teams and i've used tepafini and cortana in multiple teams so they have specific ev spreads uh, and they're just stuck in this team anyway you've got then the nice fire water grass core i think that's very solid in this format we'll get into the the details of the team it'll be down in the description it'll be a poker paste um but i think we're already five minutes in so let's jump into some battles i can explain the team along the way i've obviously been testing a lot of other stuff as well obviously tornaga one of the big things i do like it but there are some drawbacks to using it and i don't think it's the best restricted pokemon in the format that we've got access to it's definitely it's not something to snub though at the same time right zygod not something we commonly see 
and the format very much but and also the other sunset of the drought user nine tails so i'm kind of interested to see what's going on here we've got a chlorophyll vile plume and then double genies but not the uh, landerous and uh, thunderous we've got a uh, tailwind and a defiant boy over here so um basically if we get a trick room up this is it if we get a trick room up we're golden we are golden uh, and i mean golden because there's nothing that they've got to really stop calyrex under a trick room so i'm gonna go with what we've picked here we need to trick room fake out the tornadoes don't really care what the landerus does it may pivot out i think the one thing that i maybe would have feared here would be maybe vile plume tornadoes because then we can't stop both a taunt uh, or a sleep powder uh, onto our, our, our Porygon too. But this this leads fine for us. We can just fake out the Tornadus, stop that taunt, get a Trick Room up, and we're sitting in a, a very good spot. So there's a the U-turn, which is even better, you know. I don't think that my opponent's really got anything to come in that can cause us too many issues. It's going to be the Nine Tails. I mean, that does make it a little bit more tricky for sure but i think rather than getting uh calyrex on the field straight away we can um i mean what we could potentially do here is eerie impulse go for the flare blitz eerie impulse uh nine tails heat wave it's doing nothing now we can parting shot out onto this and get calyrex onto the field because i'm not really or we could eerie impulse here again and parting shot now onto the tornadoes we may see a taunt this turn from the tornadoes into p2 which would be a little bit problematic but we're not going to see that um but yeah i mean now it's minus four and we're going to get calyrex and still take damage from the heat wave for sure you, you can't like underestimate that oh will-o-wisp that could have been a bad one but you're never going to will-o-wisp um an instant roll, are you really so we're in a good spot now to uh start doing some stuff we need to remove the nine tails though that's the big thing um let's go try attack into landerus and let's go for a quick i do worry about the tornadoes coming in for the the nine tails but it may be sashed as well which could be the other big issue here no sash though we get away with that one the other option there would have been bringing tapu finney i think to support the calyrex and like i say i don't think my opponent's got anything to stop this sweep now trick room's ending so we do need to be you know a little bit cautious around that um i think we're pretty safe to just bring an incineral i know they've got to def mm. the problem is bringing an incineral here if they've got protect and they protect the thunderous here and we we activate the define for them to to go out to town next turn but they're just maxing yeah there's not there's nothing my opponent can do now so chilling here you can see this is just a good example i guess we're pretty fortunate here to see a good example of like how teams like really fall apart when calyrex is kind of um allowed to to function uh in, in the vein that it wants eerie impulse p2 as well we saw how popular that was pre series 7 um and i think it's transitioned into series 8 really nicely i i tested the ice beam shadow ball set and even with a download boost it was it was very underwhelming against a lot of the restricted pokemon you'd want to hit especially with the shadow ball so i feel like the utility of eerie impulse is just such a a uh, way better uh utility move way better use of it on on p2 especially in this format where you've got a lot of special heavy hitting special attackers so to speak so we've got another thunderous here uh calyrex ghost rider so we got horse versus horse here um redirection which could be a little bit tricky got to be careful again with incineral um and they've definitely got a trick room mode as well but am i so worried about it i think cortana can be quite good here we need to be careful around the the calyrex though uh no fake out i think we'll lead regilecki um tapu finny or do we lead tapu finny or do we lead regilecki uh p2 tapu finny and calyrex let's go for that yeah we're gonna see the urshifu come out here first um now the problem is i think we could probably get a trick room up but i don't know if we'll be able to get it up if they double into p2 which is the big issue here um yeah i think 
this is a difficult lead for most teams, I think, to prepare against. I am going to trickery. I'm going to try because I think it means my opponent has to double in to the P2. Otherwise, they get super punished for not wicked blow and max knuckle. I mean, the the um, the electro web was definitely the bad play there from us. <laughs> <laughs> if you're really looking at it, it was definitely the bad play because we're boosting the Defiant there, but I'm not too worried about the Thunderous right now, I think. We just need to break a Sash on this Urshifu and make sure that we're kind of taking it down before it is able to do too much damage. We're going to live another day with with uh, with Aleki though because we'll, um, we'll be able to at least get rid of the Urshifu now and um, we'll be able to get... Good old Glastria on or oh, Calyrex onto the field. Uh, ooh, the Indeedy makes things a little bit more tricky for sure. Mm. But we can mm, we can remove it. Um, I think I'm probably just uh, I don't want to. I'm gonna Nature's Madness. Nature's Madness. We'll go. Or do I just go Glass? Glacial Lance. Will it be enough, though? We could just go... Nature's Madness and Protect this turn. And then Glacial Lance the next turn, which should take... It'll definitely take the Thunderous down. It's just what we see from the Thunderous. Is it going after... Is it going after the... Um, yeah, it's going after the Calyrex. Yeah, that's fine. And then we just Glacial Lance now, and we're kind of... We're kind of all right, to be honest, because we can just Muddy Water Glacial Lance... And this gets around redirection, takes everything down, and it's done. And then we still got a max with one turn of trick room left. So we're in a decent spot. Depends what my opponent's got left. It is the Ghost Rider, but they can't max it. And uh, like I say, we're plus two right now. Uh, light screen, max, hailstorm, and there we go. That should wrap that one up. Okay, we're 12 minutes in. We're not too bad. Protect coming out. That's okay, though. That's all right, isn't it? And we still got Heal Pulse as well. I mean, support Finney is super nice. It's not something I really touched on in uh, when we were just looking over the team because uh, I think, like, the calm mindset's not really the most beneficial in this format at all. I don't think you've got room to do it, especially when you've got a bunch of Pokemon like Regieleki, Rillaboom, Cartana all running around, kind of running rampant in this format. I think it's very difficult for... Uh, you to get space for the calm mind uh, to utilize it so that's one of the other things interesting uh, incineroar spread and set on this team as well if we have a quick look here i've got the pasho berry so i was uh, initially playing around with assault vest but with this spread in particular you can take a mystic water boosted in the rain water spout from a modest Kyogre um, and that just gives you a little bit more freedom and a bit more flexibility against Tornogre leads where you can fake out the Tornadus without worrying that your Incinero is going to get taken down or you can go for a Snarl or Parting Shot or whatever in that situation it's quite nice uh, just to have that kind of flexibility I know it's very dedicated to a Kyogre but it is testing and it's just an idea to throw out there for, for a few of you um, to see how well it does I think what we'll do is go for Incineroar and we'll go for Reggie Aleki. Um, do we want Calyrex here? I mean, Calyrex is good if we can get the Trick Room up. It might be a bit difficult though. They've got quite a lot of things to be able to kind of prevent it, but we might be able to position like Incineroar next to P2 and get a Trick Room up potentially. Okay. We've got Incineroar and Tornadus. Probably double taunt here, protecting against the Porygon 2, I'd imagine. Uh, we probably see Protect on Tornadus, I'd imagine. Um, I think we've got to fake it out. Stop it getting the Tailwind up. Um, I don't really want our Sash broken on Reggie Aleki though yet. And there's no point in switching P2 in right now, I don't think. Um, I think actually what we'll do is we'll go for a parting shot into Incineroar. Uh, and I'm just going to... Do I Protect? Yeah, Protect Reggie Aleki. Okay. Yeah, we'll protect. Where are they going to go? Are they going to go for a parting shot into... Our Regieleki? Going for the taunt. Okay, that makes sense, I guess. Now they've got taunt, so we, we definitely know about that. So we can bring... Um, 
yeah, Incineroar and we'll Volt Switch out onto the Tornadus because then we've got access to... I'm assuming they're going to bring in... They're going to take Incineroar out now for Kyogre. And then we should be able to have that pairing of Incineroar next to P2. Oh, they're going for Taunt again. Huh. They're not going for the Tailwind just yet. Wow, we take down that Pokemon pretty easily. Are they going to go for the Taunt here? Are they going to go for the Potting Shot? Just a Snarl, which is ideal. Perfect. Now, whatever they bring in, we can definitely guarantee our Trick Room up. And then we can just get Glastra in and start doing some big damage. Uh, okay, we'll go for Fake Out into... We can't afford to Fake Out into Urshifu, though. Because uh, we'll get taunted otherwise. Um, we should be able to take a Choice Band close combat, though. So let's see. Oh, they go after Incineroar, which is perfect. Perfect, because now this just opens the door for Calyrex to come in and get the Smackdown. I'm not worried about the uh, the Incineral one iota. We're going to go Max Knuckle. We're going to go Tri Attack, and we're going to go after the Urshifu. Just cover the uh, Sash here, really. That's what the, the that's all we want to do. It might be better off. Nah, the Max Knuckle's good because we can get the boost, and if we do take it down in one shot, we get the double boost. Um, don't worry about Intimidate too much. I'm just thinking maybe like you could max Quake there, try attack, that would be enough. It would give you a boost, a uh, special defensive boost. So if it is Kyogre in the back, then at least you've got a bit more uh, kind of special defense going for you, but we'll see. It is Sash, we are covering for that. So that is helpful. Uh, we are gonna definitely see a parting shot from the Incineroar here. There's no way it attacks. Wow. You're like mine. Oh, okay. You get very lucky, my friend, with that burn. <laughs> I'm like, why are you attacking? You're like minus two, but that is why you were attacking. That is why. Um, okay, so we need to max knock once again. We're not worried about the incineral, like we said. Um, and we'll go for a try attack into the cartana. We'll see what the cart cart throws out at us. It's gonna start max knuckling itself, I think. Resetting the uh, the attack drops from the Incineroar. Man, the burn, the burn is so annoying. The burn is so annoying, but it happens. It happens, doesn't it? I don't mind from a Will-O-Wisp when it's dedicated, but from a Flare Blitz, come on, give me a break. Try attack doing nada. But we do get the burn. There we go. That's why. <laughs> there we go. Try attack. Coming back for a vengeance. Um, they're going for steel spikes, which makes sense. We're back to neutral attack, and they are going to forfeit. So, very good game to my opponent. Um, and that is this team. Like I say, it'll be down in the description below. What are we on? 18 minutes. We've got a bit of time to play with some other stuff. Let's have a look what other teams have been playing around with before we end the video today. So, yeah, Zacian, Glastria, that's something I've been playing around with as well. I love Zacian. I think it's a really cool Pokemon. Obviously, you've got your standard Ogre stuff, uh, which is good. I think we could have probably a few games of that today. And it's just it's just ridiculously strong. Um, I think uh, David Kutesh did uh, a really cool video on this build and went deep dive into it and um, this is uh, a slightly different build this isn't his build this is um, something that I, I put together prior to seeing his video but it's very similar we got very similar items on everything uh, different spreads though um okay we got Nick McGregor what's he got the um that thing i can't remember what it's called but it's a very fast fish it loves the rain and it can't be redirected potentially with propeller tail um okay we got a, a a mirror a mirror which is never never the most fun mm. and zapdos not so good i think aleki is very good here um maybe aleki aleki incineral I think we got car we need we need tailwind we need tailwind for sure so i think we'll go aleki um cart tornado skyoga okay well this isn't so bad because we can max cartana and just nuke the kyoga right now what have they got to switch in there not a great deal um not a great deal at all i think we bring in tornadoes uh we'll max overgrow there's not really... Uh, they have to switch to Kyogre. They're not. What are they doing? Okay. It could be Scarfed, but I mean... Yeah, we're going to see a Grassy Glide. That's fine, though. We just want to guarantee our, our Tailwind up while we can. Um, 
right now. I think the other option here is Tailwind and go for um, an Airstream into Rillaboom because then that frees up uh, the idea that, you know, Kyogre can then come in late game or come in now in particular if we can get rid of the Rillaboom and it's got to wait. Oh, wow. Wow. That Rillaboom takes that like a champ. Um, okay. Well, Aleki's still not bad in this, in this spot. We need to watch out for... I mean, we can Origin Pulse. I mean, the... Yeah. The problem is... Okay. I think that what we need to do is get rid of the Rillaboom. Um, go for a Thunder into Zapdos. Get rid of the Rillaboom. The max airstream, another one. Yeah, that's fine. Take us down to our sash. We'll get a bit of damage into this Zapdos. It's going to max flare, I'd imagine. We'll get the Rillaboom gone. We need that gone for Kyogre to come in and do some work. Uh, we get the. Oh, it's gone airstream. Huh. That's interesting. Okay. Okay, prerogative number two is getting rid of the Zapdos now, then. Can we do it? That is it. What have they got left? Kyogre, huh, not really, uh, I'm kind of <laughs> confused, confused, do we go into the Zapdos heavy? I think we do, I think honestly we just go, yeah, we just go um, heavy into the Zapdos, the Grassy Terrain still up, so Leaf Blade Thunder is going to be enough to get it, yeah, more than enough, and then we just close this one up. I was worried there about the Max Guard and then the Kyogre going for a water spout, a cheeky one. But, you know, when your opponent's back to the wall, anything can happen in that, that situation. Um, is that it? Oh, they got, they've got the Barrascuda. Okay, we are plus one with... And we got Tailwind up. So we're actually not in a bad spot at all. So, um, Barrascuda, is it going to be sashed? Most likely not. I don't think it will be. No. Because you've got to have the Sash on Tornadus most of the time. I know I haven't in this team. I've got Mental Herb. Uh, but that's because I want the Sash on Regieleki. So, there we go. Oh, and we're finishing up on that nice neat. There we go. 1337. I don't know what it's like in the grand scheme of things uh, on the ladder. Let's see. Let's have a look. What's the ladder looking like at the minute? Okay. Wow, people are up to the dizzy heights of 500 already on this ladder. So, yeah, long way to go. But, um, like I say, I'm going to be playing next week on the channel. Um we'll have rental cords ready to go monday will be kicking off with a rental cord so it'll be a lot of fun and um, if this particular pokemon you'd like to see first as well let me know uh, i probably will throw out dialga first i think that's probably one of my favorite pokemon that i'd like to kind of feature but there's so many different uh, restricted pokemon restricted builds as well and we'll do a deep dive into some actual calls as well had some really good feedback from our discord server uh through the question out there earlier in the week asking what kind of content they'd like to see in regards to series eight and it's uh, a big popular one was kind of looking at different calls and how to kind of uh, approach those different calls that we're seeing that are picking up a lot of popularity in the format at the minute and how to kind of uh, wall out certain calls and approach different matchups. So that's something we'll look at. We'll look at the common teams that are being played at the minute and we'll take and try and dissect them. So we'll do that. And uh, like I say, just um, thanks so much for the patience while we've not had content here on the channel. It's, uh, it's not ideal for myself. It's very frustrating um and it's not it's not generally me so i would just like to um say thank you for uh, all of you for continuing to watch the channel supporting it and there will be very a lot of exciting content to come and the other note as well is that we do have the flinch squad circuit it is starting on monday the 1st of February, so a few days time. Now, signups will be open until uh, Sunday, the 31st of January. You can find out all about the circuit in the Patreon link below, uh, which will tell you all about the circuit coming up this season and how you can sign up and be become a, a member of the circuit and take part in it and compete in that tournament. It is going to be probably one of the biggest and first VGC Series A tournaments that's been set up and run. We've got our first weekly starting a week today, so keep an eye on the Discord for that uh, that'll be a lot of fun the sign up will be going up on monday for that uh, i'm very excited about that first one but yeah all the information and if you have any doubt about
about the 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 patreon and the, the the flinch squad i've got a couple of testimonial videos that i'm going to throw up at the end of this one here before we finish up so you can you guys can hear from a couple of our probably longest uh seven members in the uh, the flinch squad so i'll leave it with there thanks for tuning in friends enjoy these uh testimonials from uh crim and johnny and a uh, big shout out to those guys for actually providing that content for us have a great rest of your day and i'll see you all very soon thanks again friends take care and bye bye hi i'm davido you might know me as johnny hacks i've been part of the flinch squad from pretty much the beginning I joined because I loved the project and I really wanted to get better at the game. Not only I improved my team building skills and my in-game plays, but I also found people I can genuinely call friends. It's thanks to this amazing community and Lee that I could improve so much, especially because the circuit gave me the structure I needed to keep playing and keep practicing. Hi guys, I'm uh, Joe, better known as Krim, your uh, friendly neighborhood mod for Osiris Studios, um, at least one of them, and uh, this is kind of a little testimonial that I'm doing for the Flinch Squad circuit. So um, as some of you or many of you know, I've, I've been involved in the circuit for uh, quite a while now. Um, I actually, I hopped in a l maybe a little later than some of the other guys, um, Sun Series, uh, <laughs> For anyone who might recognize that, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to talk to you for a second about some of the things that it's done for me. Uh, since I started, um, I hopped back into VGC after quite a while off, and so um, I didn't really know what I was getting back into. Um, I, I wasn't really familiar with, with the scene or with what I was doing. And I can't begin to explain how much I've learned from everybody in our circuit, from Lee himself, um, and how many great friends I've made. Um, I've got a guy that I build with all the time now. Um, I build with a lot of the other members too. Um, I, I've, I've gone to a bunch of events with guys from this circuit, like in real life events back when we were having those. and. Uh, it's, it's been a ton of fun. I feel like I can call or chat or hit up any of them to talk about any number of things. Um, we all do a whole bunch of different jobs in real life, you know. Um, I, <laughs> me, personally, you could probably see I'm a musician, but I know we've got weather guys and we've got government employees and accountants and web designers, so all walks of life. Um, but we all connect together with, uh, with this game, and we all have a ton of fun playing it. Um, we like to laugh, we like to joke, and honestly, um, I don't think that there's a better group out there um, in the Pokemon community than this one that we have here. So uh, if you're thinking about joining the Flinch Squad circuit and you wanna just have some fun um, playing some Pokemon and uh, laughing about what we love, then stop on by. We're all friendly. Um, there's no egos here. And uh, I, I think that you'll really find that you enjoy it. You'll make some good, good great friends and um, it'll be a huge benefit to your life in general. So uh, that's all for me and uh, hope to see you guys around.